الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, it is extremely important that we become conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more so in this beautiful month of Ramadan, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed upon us the fasting, and one of the reasons and aims of this fasting is for us to achieve consciousness of Allah known as taqwa, which is also referred to as piety. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are conscious of Him, and may he make us the true achievers of taqwa. Brothers and sisters, every minute counts. In fact, every second counts. And what I mean by this is my brothers and sisters, our time in this world is very limited and it is fixed from the day we were born. And even before that, it was already known exactly when we were going to leave this world. So every one of us, our time is completely fixed and it will not change. Inna ajala Allahi idha jaa la yuakhar. When the prescribed time and appointed time of Allah subhanahu wa taala comes, it will not be delayed at all. My brothers and sisters, from this we learn that we have a mission in this world we need to accomplish. Every moment that we waste, we have wasted our time. And we will not be able to achieve what we are meant to be achieving whilst in this world for the short period of time. And this is why do not let a minute pass where you have done nothing, let alone doing that which is bad. So the first category of people who are the most successful are those who ensure that every minute at hand has been spent in a constructive way, benefiting a person himself and benefiting others whilst in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are others then in the next category who waste their time. They have neither done good nor have they done bad in that particular time. Time wasting is considered a sin in Islam only because we are here on a mission in order to earn as many goals as we can score in the short period of time that this life will last. So those who have wasted their time doing nothing, they are at loss. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُصْرِ Allah is taking an oath by time, then saying indeed, all men are at loss. Besides those who do good, besides those who believe, those who remind one another of the truth, and those who remind one another of bearing Sabr or being patient and forbearant. May Allah make us from amongst those. The third category of people are those who have wasted their time sinning against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doing that which has resulted in the downfall of others. Not having reached out to people is one thing. But having reached out to them with harm is something extremely dangerous. So my brothers and sisters, a person who is at a great loss is he or she who has wasted his time doing that which has earned the sin or the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, every minute counts. Just like whilst you are in your short life in this particular university, for example, every moment you are here would count if you had come to an institution and at the same time wasted your time, money, effort, energy and not made the most of your minutes whilst you were here, you have not been a true student of knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us true. Whilst you are here and you have the time, make sure you study as best as you can. These days will not come back perhaps and they will go, be gone forever. You may not get the same opportunity twice. And this is why use the opportunity whilst it is at hand. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us all. Brothers and sisters, in the same way, we have a month and this beautiful month of Ramadan that we are in right now, every minute counts. Turn to Allah before the minutes go. I am sure it is very fresh in your mind where you read your Friday prayers last week. And now that you are here, it seems like in a flash the week has already gone. This is definitely one of the prophecies of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wherein he says towards the end of time, time will be crumpled, known as yataqarabu zaman Time shall be crumpled in a way that a year feels like a month, and a month feels like a week, and a week feels like a day. And that is what is happening now, where from Friday to another Friday, it seems like it was just a day or slightly more. May Allah grant us the use of our time. Before we know it, Ramadan will be gone. And just like we have fresh in our minds the previous Ramadan, we may believe within our hearts that we will see the next Ramadan very soon, not realizing that if Allah has prescribed for us, to die between now and that time, this might just be the last few moments of Ramadan that we are seeing. Brothers and sisters, do not waste your time. We do not have time to play here. Recently, we have the football that is going on. People sit and watch it. And they sit hilariously watching it, laughing and crying. Really cheering the people on, wasting their time, doing absolutely nothing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson from those who spend their 90 minutes with one aim and one goal, and that is to score as much as they can within the 90 minutes. We also have about 70 years perhaps, which is the time that we have in this world to score as much as we can. We only have one goal, and that is to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't waste your time allowing the devil to score goals. We need to score the goals. Those goals will be scored by fulfilling your salah, by quitting your bad habits. Every bad habit that you have quit is definitely a goal that you have scored for yourself against shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. This is a month where we should be contemplating over the bad that we have within us in order to eradicate it and cut it out of our lives. And the good that there is to do in order to engage it. Those who are not regular with salah, become regular with salah in this beautiful month. It might be your last few days. It is your match. You are not supposed to allow the other or the opposition to score a goal. In our case, it is the devil who is in our opposition. So remember, if you are not regular with your prayer, become regular with your prayer. If you are a person who is engaged in bad habits, become a person who has eradicated those bad habits and utilized the month of Ramadan in a way that when we exit it, we will be from amongst those who have exited it completely forgiven. As you know, the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever has fasted the month of Ramadan with full conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, expecting a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, indeed, all their previous sins will be completely wiped out. Wouldn't you like that? I would, and I'm sure you would. My brothers and sisters, the way to achieve the wiping out of sins in the month of Ramadan is by fasting solely for the sake of Allah. The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bear this in mind. Remembering that this is a great act of worship. Cut out bad habits. Become a person who is more conscious of the fact that you are fasting. And remember, it is the time to develop yourself completely. The same applies to fulfilling prayer by night. May Allah grant us acceptance of what extra worship we are doing by night. Where Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَمَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever stands at night in prayer for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with full conviction and at the same time expecting a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will come out of this month of Ramadan having earned complete and total forgiveness. Every one of us is in desperate need of the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do not be lazy when it comes to the night prayer. Do not be lazy when it comes to listening to the Quran in prayer. Do not be from amongst those who look for a masjid or a place of worship 
where they finish their salah as soon as possible. Because if that is the case, what iman and what ihtisab would we be engaged in? What type of conviction would we be having? And what type of accountability would, be, would we be feeling when we are busy looking for the quickest masjid where the fastest recitation occurs? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Rather look for a place where the beautiful melodious reading of the Quran is such that we are cleansed by listening to it. Also my brothers and sisters, do not waste a minute. Spend your time learning the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whilst we are here studying whatever field we have come to study, bear in mind that the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate source of knowledge. And remember, if you have wasted your time by not looking into the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, yet you have studied so many other books, indeed you will be at loss. So therefore, take a moment to pick up the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Learn what it says. Attend some of the lessons where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words are being explained in a beautiful way. Where we are taught not only how to pronounce these words, but what they mean as well. That will lead us to what is known as the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, as much as we work in our lives for so many years studying in order for us to get a job whereby we will get a salary so that we can get married and have children and look after them and perhaps buy a house and a car that will last us just a few years. Remember the ultimate house, the ultimate conveyance, the ultimate family that you will be having in paradise. And in order to qualify for that, you need to have a degree. You need to have a degree in your link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this will only be achieved if you know what Allah has created you for. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ni'matani maghboonun fihima kathirun min al-nas, as-sihhatu wal-faraq. There are two gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that have deceived many people or many people are deceived by them. What are they? Many people take them for granted. These two gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first being good health and the second being free time. The time that we have that is free is actually our time to earn closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do a good deed. Go out and help people. Reach out to the orphans and perhaps the homeless and perhaps others. Learn to benefit mankind at large and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reach out to you as well. كَانَ اللَّهُ فِي عَوْنِ الْعَبْدِ مَا كَانَ الْعَبْدُ فِي عَوْنِ أَخِيهِ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah, may peace be upon him, states that Allah's assistance will continue being with a worshipper for as long as that worshipper continues assisting a fellow worshipper. May Allah make us from those. So my brothers and sisters, no time wasting inshallah. I would like you to undertake today from this pulpit, I'd like you to undertake by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will do more to learn the word of Allah, to learn what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, to learn why is it that we are born, why, why is it that we were created in the first place. Many a people do not know what is meant by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind or jinn kind except that they may worship me. Many a people do not know why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this or what exactly it means. Some think it means that we need to engage in perpetual prayer and perhaps be in the form or in the condition of perpetual fasting. That is not what is meant by this. What is meant by this is Allah has created you and I in order to lead our entire lives in a way that we do not disobey His command. Rather, we obey His instruction. So my brothers and sisters, it is quite simple if you look at it, but it requires dedication to be fulfilled. People can be good Muslims if only they have the dedication. And if only they really would like to be the good Muslims, then by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it will come. But when a person does not have that intention in their heart, how will it be followed through by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Those who struggle and strive to get to us, or those who struggle and strive in our cause to come to us, those who try to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those are the ones whom the doors of guidance shall be opened for. So if I want guidance, there is no point in me sitting back 
and saying, Allah is not guiding me. All guidance is solely in the hands of Allah. When Allah has put it in my hands to make an effort and I'm making no effort whatsoever. So do not be mistaken and do not blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for one's misguidance. No, not at all. Allah holds us responsible for the effort. Every one of us needs to make the effort. We need to try. Just like all of us who are here today, Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah we have made the effort to be here. So Allah chose us to be from amongst those who are here. But if a person did not make an effort to come and kept on sleeping in his couch or his bed and saying, if Allah wants me to be there for salah, I will be there for the Jumu'ah or the Friday prayer. Such a person can be penalized and will be penalized by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they have insulted Allah. Allah gave you the energy. Allah gave you the power. Allah gave you the ability. And Allah told you, I want you to be at a certain place at a certain time. Where were you? You were busy insulting Allah to say, oh Allah, if you want, you take me there. And Allah says, but I gave you the capacity to do that and I left it up to you to go or not to go. Yes, Allah knows what would happen definitely, but He holds us responsible for the way we use our energies and utilize our time. My brothers and sisters, utilize your time in the best possible way. Do not waste your few minutes that you have left in this world. Believe me, before you know it, you will be in your grave. And this is why some of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to keep their enshrouding in their own homes the shroud that they would be enshrouded with known as the kafan in the arabic language they would keep it with them constantly so that they would be reminded that this life is very short my brothers and sisters we do not mean to spell doom and gloom but it is important for us to remind one another of death a time will come when we would be from amongst those who have gone, long gone, nobody would even know we existed. I ask you a question. How many of you can name five people who lived here in this beautiful city 200 years back? I don't think we can name those five, the bulk of us. Why? As important as they were, as wealthy as they were, as powerful as they were, they are gone and their duty unto Allah was between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I know I am living now and I have a duty unto Allah. You could be famous today, believe me, in 200 years time, perhaps nobody will know you ever existed, but where will you be? You need to worry about that today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease, make us from those who prepare to meet with him. And this was the challenge that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, the companions may peace be upon them of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had. This was the challenge. This was what they were worried about constantly. And they are our heroes. They are the ones we learn from. They are the ones we take from. So my brothers and sisters, not a moment to be missed, not a moment to be wasted by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bear in mind that if we engage in repentance, Allah will forgive us. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Start a new leaf. Believe me, so many people across the globe have quit their bad habits. Why is it that we are still sitting with our bad habits? So many who have planned to sin have cut their sin because they, they are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In some cases, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has overtaken people with calamity and disaster. And that is when they turn to Allah. Believe me, a calamity and a disaster that comes in the direction of a person who was not close to Allah, but as a result became close to Allah. Those are actually the gifts of Allah upon a person. Sometimes we say the sickness is a punishment, but believe me, if that sickness has drawn you closer to Allah, it is no ways a punishment. It is a means of you drawing closeness to your maker. It is the tapping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your shoulder to say, Oh my worshiper, I love you enough to turn you towards me. I tried to turn you in so many different ways, but when you were going smooth and easy, you never remembered me. Now that I have tapped you with sickness and calamity, you have turned to me at least in salah. Brothers and sisters, do not let that day come before we pray. Why is it that I need to wait for sickness before I turn to Allah? I need to wait for poverty before I turn to Allah. I need to wait for something really ridiculously bad to happen to me before I turn to Allah. Your days are numbered. Your moments are numbered. The seconds of your life are already counted. Believe me, they are drawing to an end. Do not wait for something bad to happen in your life before you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here we have the blessed gift of the month of Ramadan. And it is such an important opportunity 
that Allah has blessed us with to turn to Him. Brothers and sisters, I ask Allah to help me to turn to Him firstly, and then every single one of us that are here, and all those who may be listening, may Allah grant us, may Allah truly grant us the changing point in our lives, the turning point where we can turn a new leaf, and we can very happily one day say that by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we were encouraged to do something that is good. This is the meaning of tawasaw bil haqq. This is the meaning of tawasaw bil sabr. Those who remind one another regarding the truth and those who remind one another and assist one another regarding being forbearant and practicing what is known as sabr in the face of what Allah has chosen for us. My brothers and sisters, to do a good deed, a lot of energy is required. It won't just come. You need to make an effort. Without making the effort to get up, you will not be able to get up. And this is why we say laziness, if it overtakes you, you are at a loss. Believe me, this is the month of Ramadan. It is not the month of sleeping. And it is not the month of having fun. And it is not the month of eating throughout the night in compensation for what we have missed during the day. No, that is not what Ramadan is all about. Ramadan is all about sacrificing for the sake of Allah, fighting our laziness, fighting our bad habits. And we've just spoken about that. May Allah make it easy for us. And may He make us from amongst those who take heed. Brothers and sisters, we love one another for His sake. And we ask Him to love us all. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه جواد كريم.